This is a 1964 Zenith High Fidelity AM FM radio. And I don't do too many videos on vintage electronics, but I do enjoy working on them. Um, I leave the real videos up to Shango 66 and Radio TV Photo Net, folks like that. Um, for me, this is more a learning experience when I work on them. I'm not super familiar with them, uh, but I do enjoy working on them. I wasn't going to do a video on this one, but it's got issues. I, I plugged it into a dim bulb, was just going to do a recap on it. Um, I'm going to actually give this one some real love because it's uh, going to uh, some folks as a wedding gift. Um, they'll appreciate something like this. Um, so I was going to do all the extra stuff to it, you know, recap it, even if it doesn't, even if the the uh, electrolytics aren't bad, just because it's going far away and I won't be able to service it. So it needs to work um, for a long time. So it'll get the appropriate uh, safety cap across the line and all that. Anyways, um, it looks like it's got all the original tubes in it. I did peek in the back, hooked it up to a dim bulb, tried it, and... Um, it, uh, it's quiet. It's just totally quiet. It's got some, it has a little bit of filter hum. So you know that the, the filaments are coming up and, uh, the audio output transformer is good. Um, but it's just, uh, you know, AM FM, they're just totally quiet. Uh, there's some broken wires off the back, um, for the antenna. So, uh, I did download the SAMs online. If you're going to work on one of these, got it right here. And it is uh, 725 folder 10. Um, the online schematic's really bad. I didn't buy the one online. I just found this one on Antique Radio Forum. Uh, I asked Shango if he'd send me pictures of it because I know he's got the hard copies. So um, we'll see if he sends them to me. But anyways, um, probably not going to need the schematic. It's I'm, what I might. The, the real reason I wanted is just to validate uh, resistor values. Um, just because, like I said, it's going to be going to some folks as a wedding gift, and I want it uh, functioning properly, um, so I might replace resistors and stuff. So anyways, um, it's just a troubleshooting video. I'm probably not going to show everything, just uh, you know, maybe what I find with it, and maybe how I find it, some of my methods. I'm a little surprised to see that. It's got a selenium rectifier in it, and this is 1964. Uh, 64, I would expect to see a silicon diode. Uh, so that's a little bit surprising. That will come out. I don't leave selenium rectifiers in. They, uh, they are nothing but trouble. And especially since this is not going into my collection, I frequently don't change things in my collection because I know that I can repair it someday. But for somebody that's, uh, doesn't know how to work on this stuff. Um, it's important that I change it. Um, it. Looks to me like the dial string may be broken. Uh, it's missing right here. Maybe just one of them. Maybe there's two dial strings. Because it does look like... This does look like this part works. So I get the slug tuned FM right there, which is kind of neat. Hopefully we don't have silver mica disease. That's potentially an issue. That's the power switch and volume. This would be your tone. Hi-fi. <laughs> it's just got two speakers. It's got a high and a low speakers. Well, so all the antenna wires are broken off this thing, and maybe that's why it's not doing anything. Sometimes this has to do with the tuning of the circuit. Um, this is the ground. This just broke off the back here. This, I think, is the ground. It's got to go probably here. This is probably the F terminal for FM. I, I have to look at the schematic, but, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's not hooked up here. This, I think, goes to the loop antenna, and then something else goes to the other side of it. There's two terminals on the loop antenna. So I'm going to have to get the schematic here and see if I can figure figure this out. I got one, two, three, four terminals. I got one, two, three, four wires. So... And these need to be extended and stuff, too. That's usually what happens with these. So we'll get the soldering iron hot. This did just break off here, this green. So let me figure this out. Okay, so we got the wiring all taken care of here. It's still dead. Um, 
probably can't hear right now, but just got hum from the speaker with the volume all the way up. Um, we know the filter is good. Uh, but that tells me the amplifier side is working. Sounds to me like the front end's dead. And every... Well, sensitive. Um, we're dead. All three are dead. So all three... Well, AM, FM, and FM, AFC. They're, but it's all dead. Um, here are all the IF cans. It's got to be something in the very front end, would be my guess. Um... 455, 455, 455, and the rest are 10.7, and one of these is going to be the discriminator coil. So, anyways, um, take a look at the schematic here. We'll see if uh, uh, see if we can't attack it maybe with the signal tracer. We'll come in here. We'll take a look. Um, see, both sides are dead, right? The AM and the FM is dead. So it's almost got to be either here or here. Because both are, both sides are dead. I got to think about that for a minute. No, that's AM, FM, mixer, AM, RF. No, it could, be, it could be all the way over here. Yeah. So something's dead in this. If I was going to guess, something's dead over here. It could be over here, but... Um, Something's not either wired right, or there's broken wire, or a bad tube, or something's going on. So we'll get the signal tracer, and we're just going to kind of systematically go through here. Okay, so, going to be a little bit shaky here. I cheated a little bit. I jumped to the first IF. And you can barely hear it, but because I need, probably need to turn that up, but we got it there. Got it coming into the first IF for AM. I'm thinking this is a tube because all the bands are dead. I bet one of these tubes is dead. Um, going out of the IF. Jumping into the next IF. We got it there. Coming out of the IF. Coming into the 12BA6, the first 12BA6. We got it there. If I come to pin 5... One, two, three, four, five. Dead. I got nothing. I bet that 12 BA6 is dead. Let me check my stash. I'm pretty certain I've got that. That's an A5 regular tube. So let's pop a 12 BA6 in there. Do I see white inside of that tube? I see white inside of that tube. I bet that thing's gone to air. And very fitting, I have actually an old Zenith. 12BA6. It says it right there. It was in 12BA6 uh, box. I can barely see it, but it does say it. Let's pop this guy in there. And we'll see if it comes to life. It's always hard working on these radios that are upside down that don't stand on their own. So flip that on. Make sure we have the volume so we can hear it. We'll just see if that was it. I'm not hearing, like, a, ca a capacitor won't do this. Oh. Well, it's picking up KNX, like, well, because I had it tuned to KNX, because that's what I was picking it up on. But that seems like that was a problem. So now, we should, on pin 5, this signal tracer is going bad. Pin 5 should turn that up. Yep. And there it is coming out. So if we turn the volume down over here. There it is there. We actually got load on the circuit now. And there it is coming out. Bad tube. So this is why these tools are invaluable, you know, and you can't buy that anymore. You can get a used one, but, you know, you can't, nobody makes 
good old fashioned American handmade stuff like that anymore. So rant over there. But um, so I bet my I bet our our FM works now. In it, the AFC is working. I bet because I didn't touch the tuner. I don't know. It's, it just happens to be happens to line up with whatever's near K and X. So this should be. What is that? AFC. AFC's in the middle. So. So yeah, AM F AF, FM AFC FM. It's a little bit off there, but AFC's working because I can hear it when I turn it to the center. I hear it. I hear the the uh, station pop in. Yeah, it's working perfect. AFC is popping right in, which means the alignment is spot on, and that's awesome because I really didn't want to have to align this thing. Uh, it's hall and stations, which means I hooked the antenna up right. That's KUSC, and that's a low-power FM uh, classical station. If it's picking that up, it's doing pretty good. Let's see. That's AM. If it picks up LA Oldies or um, K Mozart, it's doing pretty good, too. It just sounds to me like there isn't anything wrong with the alignment on this. I was on the wrong band. Well, that would help. What's that, KNX? So. Look, that's KNX. There it is. Now I have to polarize the antenna this direction to pick this station up really well, and I'm picking it up. So that means the AM alignments. I've done enough radios in this garage. I know exactly how good alignment is just based on how it performs or where it's sitting because I've done so many radios now. Um, I don't, There's no alignment problem with this thing. It's perfect. So we need to fix the dial string. I've got some dial string. Let me get that fixed. That goes right there. We're taking that thing out of there. Selenium rectifiers. There's two kinds of selenium rectifiers. Those that have gone bad and those that will go bad. That's getting out of there. We'll get rid of some of these wax caps with some film caps that I got laying around. And I bet that'll put this thing to bed. And then we'll just do maybe some cosmetic cleanup on it since it's a gift. That's the treble base. I think is what it says. Base treble. I wonder if you pull it out for... No, it's just a one one shot pot. Why do they call it bass treble? I guess that's more bass, more treble. Anyways, rambled long enough. Uh, I'd say this thing's probably in pretty good shape, uh, other than just you know do the normal servicing stuff. So now there really isn't a right or a wrong way to bypass selenium rectifiers. I like to just leave it in here for you know. Uh, originality i guess you'd call it it's the original part there's nothing wrong with it there's no reason to take it out um but i disconnected it here which this is the positive side you can see this is the ac side this is going to the pilot light transformer this thing's got a pilot light transformer on how silly is that this comes to the line side and if you follow it the line side's right here on this terminal block here um, there was a, this uh, wire right here was coming out going to here i cut it short and I just took the solder out of this terminal block right here, and I just put a 1N4007 right in line here. And we'll just leave it just like that. That 1N4007 takes the place of this guy right here. The line voltage is going to go up. The, the B-plus is going to go up a little bit. It's, it's fine. I've never had a problem with it. Um, your cap, you know, it starts pushing the limits on the voltage ratings of the cap. I, like I said, I've never had a problem. I still use 160-volt caps and... I never had an issue. The other thing I noticed is a grid coupling cap is one of those plastic guys there. Um, that's got to go. It's probably leaky and going to burn up the audio output tube. Um, I did change the across-the-line cap with the inappropriate capacitor. 
Um, I don't have the right size safety cap. The ones that I got are too big and I'm concerned about that being larger. So I just put a film cap in there, whatever. It'll be fine. Somebody's also been in here. They put an orange drop in here at some point. So something went bad at some point in this thing's life. Um, not quite sure what that is yet, but, uh, so we're going to get the rest of these wax caps out of here, though, because like I said, I, this isn't going to be mine. It's going to go to somebody who doesn't know anything about electronics, and I want this thing to be tits up when it's done. So anyways, uh, let's uh, swap the rest of these caps out. This is pretty simple. Uh, before we do that, though, I should hook it back up to a dim bulb uh, just in case I screwed something up here. Uh We'll bring it up kind of slow, just in case. And I am watching the bulb as we go here, and I'm not seeing anything funny, so... Um, I'm guessing that means that, you know, I didn't do anything stupid with the diode, like put it in backwards or something like that. So we should have something come out of this thing here in just a second, as soon as the tubes warm up. Unless I screwed something up, which is entirely possible. Definitely feeling heat. Did I, uh... Yep. Bad speaker connection. Listen to that AFC pop on this thing. Wow, that's great. Hall in the station's in, so I'm not even going to touch the alignment. So, uh, next is going to be a recap. Uh, you've seen one, you've seen them all. Uh, I'm not even going to bother filming it. It's just going to be, you know, movie magic. And just like that, it's been recapped. Um, and I lied. I didn't do the electrolytic. I'm not going to. Uh, I went through, checked the voltages. I paralleled in a cap at each section and checked the voltages when I did that. No changes. So that means the cap's doing its job. Yeah, I changed my mind. Let's call it lying, though. I lied to you guys. Um, I just decided that uh, I flipped it over and I was looking at it. I said, this thing's so easy to get to. I'll just cut the top off. It's just it's one way to do these. Cut the top off of the, of the cap. We'll hog this all out. What's interesting is these things are usually like packed full. And this is all that's in there. I've never seen one that's like this before. I don't know if it shrunk. So maybe it was, maybe it was getting ready to go. But... Uh, either way, we'll restuff this can. Just pop this out of here. We'll solder the four caps inside of here and call it good. Okay, restuff the can. Um, there wasn't a good place to put a ground through the bottom of this one. This one had more like a rubber filler in the bottom and then the phenolic plate. And none of the grounds came through anywhere that was convenient. So I just uh, used a hot soldering iron and, and got the chassis in three spots right here. Brought two of the capacitors out the side right here and one here and one here uh, and just soldered them straight to the to the uh, chassis that's just the best way to do it and i just use a little of this aluminum tape it doesn't look perfect but this is kind of the common way to do this uh you know just this is just a cap so anyways that's all tightened up now uh fire it back up use a dim bulb you know just to make sure in case i shorted something that doesn't blow anything up Okay, let's see if we killed anything. I just threw a 60 watt in there, just in case. Got it real limited. Um, I turned the switch off here, didn't I? And dim bulb looks nice and dim, so that's good. I just put the speaker, just hooked up one speaker right here just to get in here. And so we'd have something... Uh, 
Oh, it would help if I put the missing tubes back in, wouldn't it? I took them out when I uh, went to cut the capacitor open. It works a little bit better with the tubes in it. Isn't this fun? Ooh. Well, that sounds good. It sounds pretty sounds pretty good. I know you probably can't hear it because of the way this directional mic is. But let's see, we'll go all the way down to Got the dial string fixed, too, by the way, if I didn't mention that. Let's see, K Jazz is around here somewhere. There it is. That sounds incredible. And I think it does sound better now that it's been recapped. I was a little suspicious last night. I was checking the B plus, and um, with the with the silicon diode in there, uh, without the dim bulb and circuit, and you can see we're just glowing, just glowing here. Uh, without the dim bulb and circuit at all, my B plus was one thirty six. It should be one forty, and with that silicon diode in there, I'd expect it to be closer to one fifty. So I'm curious now. Well, maybe we can get in here and we can check the B plus. Uh, with the with the recap done, I bet the B plus is higher. Um, so you know, I was wrong about the cap being good. Well, I thought I heard a rattle in the speaker, so I decided I was going to take the speaker out. And uh, it was actually the front of it. This discussion right here was rubbing on the front, so I tightened that up. But since I've got it apart now, I'll turn that down. Since I've got it apart now, I said, well, I'll just take the plastic off and everything, and I'll I'll get this cleaned up. This is going to be really easy to refinish. I've got some uh, spray lacquer laying around. We'll get this stripped down real quick. I've got some chemical strip, and uh, we'll uh, shoot some lacquer on it. Now, this is one absolutely badass radio um, for a... It's a hi-fi, or really, it's just got a high speaker in it. Um, it uh, it performs, and the finish came out real nice, too. I just did a quick uh, uh, lacquer job on it. If you ever want to restore clock or radios or anything, this stuff's really good. This deft uh, wood touch-up restore. Uh, it's a satin, uh, satin variety. Um, but, yeah, this thing is just really, really cool. I, I kind of want to keep it. <laughs> Um, but, uh, it just sounds so good for being mono. Um, but you know, the AFC works wonderfully. Uh, you know, it's just a really good radio. Mm -hmm. 